Hi friends, in this session I am going to show the demo of Spring WebFlex. So what is Spring WebFlex? Spring WebFlex is a asynchronous way of doing uh, web frameworks. As part of Spring Framework 5 we got this uh, reactive stack. Uh, before uh, Spring 5 we were having the servlet stack. Here is the stack uh, which contains uh, for servlet stack we are following with servlet container. Inside servlet container we have servlet API. For security we are using Spring security and uh, to build the web application we are using Spring MVC to connect to the uh, database we are using Spring Data Repository which has uh, JDBC, JP and NoSQL. It supports both uh, traditional and uh, uh, NoSQL databases. But in case of reactive stack, uh, we are supporting with Servlet 3.1 containers and Netty. Servlet 3.1 supports asynchronous way of uh, doing, handling the request and responses. In, in place of servlet API, we are uh, following with the reactive stream adapters. For the security, we are using Spring Security Reactive. To build the web application, we are using Spring WebFlex. To connect to the database, we are using Spring Data Reactive Repository. which uh, Currently, it supports Mongo, Cassandra, Redis and Couchbase. Uh, it supports only the NoSQL DBs. Uh, there is no support for uh, RDBMS. So we, they, they are going to provide, maybe in the future release, we may get the support for that. So how this reactive stream works? This reactive stack works based on the reactive stream specification. They have four interfaces as part of this uh, reactive stream specification. That is publisher, subscriber, subscription and processor. Publisher is the one which is going to publish the messages. Publisher has only one method. That is subscribe method which takes the scrubs. Subscriber. Yeah, the publisher interfa interface has a subscribe method which takes the subscriber. And the subscriber has four methods. One is on subscribe which takes the subscription object. On next when the data is submitted. On error, if any error happens while send, uh, receiving while emitting the data, if once the data is successfully uh, received, we'll get on complete event. And subscription has uh, two methods. One is request. We can call how many number of uh, date, uh, elements we want by passing uh, an argument. If you are not passing, it will be taken as unbounded. So whatever the data publisher is having, it will be emitting to the subscriber. If you want to cancel that subscription, we can use cancel method. And similarly, processor. Processor is the one which extends both uh, publisher and subscriber. So any reactive uh, stream has to implement these four interfaces to provide this non-blocking uh, support. So how it works is, uh, example, if you are hitting one uh, reactive endpoint from the browser, uh, the subs it will be treated as a subscriber. It calls uh, publisher subscribe method by passing the subscriber in, uh, instance. So once the publisher receives that event, it checks if it uh, if it want to it will uh, send the subscription uh, event to the subscriber. If subscriber is want to request n number of data, he can pass the request uh, subscription call of request with the uh, number of data he want. If you don't, if you want to get all the data, he can use that unbounded request. Once if he asks, the subscriber sends the number of requests he want, data he want from the publisher, publisher starts emitting the data using on next event. For each uh, data it sends, it will trigger one on next event. Once the data is completed successfully, it will send on complete events, sending the subscriber, there is no more data, so the subscription is going to end. In case in between if any error occurs, it sends on error with the exception message. We have two uh, classes which is uh, to support this uh, message publish. One is mono. If you want to send uh, zero or one element, uh, we have to use mono. Mono implements this publisher. So we can send, if you want to 
emit one element we will use mono if you want to send zero to n elements we will go with the flux flux sends uh, n number of elements similarly if any exception any error happens uh, it sends on error if it is working fine it will send on next whatever the events we have seen in the subscriber so now i am going to uh, my ide and i am going to create one simple demo using this flux and mono so i am going to create new project new spring starter project i am going to name it as spring reflex So I am going to add the dependency spring reactive web and clicking finish. So my project is created here. If I go to pom.xml, it is having the web flux dependency. So it created uh, the main method spring webflex application. So I'm going to add uh, scan package, base package. I'm going to give com dot example dot demo. Now I am going to create one uh, RESTful web services. So I am going to add the package com dot example dot demo dot rest. This uh, reactive. We can implement Spring Webflux using a traditional uh, at the rate uh, controller, the REST controller, or we can use the functional interface. Both the ways we can able to implement. So in this example, I am going to show with uh, uh, our REST controller. So I am going to create one uh, controller class. I'm just naming as test controller. at the rate rest controller with the request mapping uh, I'm giving some slash test just for demo purpose I'm creating one mono uh, rest endpoint one with the uh, flux endpoint so public mono I will return integer values mono integer get single value I need to add mono dependency which is part of project reactor and I need to add the get mapping it's a get call so now I'm going to return one mono element return mono has just method to pass uh, the elements so I'm going to use it mono dot just
we can use either just or empty if you want to pass empty data or else just we can pass with one value so i'm using just i'm giving the data one similarly for n elements i'm using flux i'm changing the type as flux And here get values I will change the mother name I have added the import statement now I am using flux to just to add the element to emit the elements from the flux I will pass some 5 elements 2 3 4 5 Here I will give the path as values. Here it will be value. For mono I will give. Maybe mono I will give. For flux I will give flux. So now I am going to start my app application. application is started now I'll, I'll go to postman and I'll hit the endpoint by default uh, it uses a uh, spring boot uses netty server uh, if you want we can change it to tom it supports both tomcat jetty and undertow if you want we can change that using pom.xml so currently I'm using the default one that is netty web server so I'm going to postman and hitting that endpoint Last test dash mono. See, we are able to retrieve the value one, whatever we have just passed. Uh, just to see the uh, events, I'll add the log method to see what are the events are emitted. Similarly, for flux, also I'll add and I'll restart my application. So the netty server is started in port 8080. Now I am going to my postman and hitting the endpoint. If you come here on the console we are able to see first it called that on subscribe method of the subscriber which is having the subscription. So as per the subscription it calls the request method. Here it is passing unbound so whatever the data is there with the publisher will be sent. So we have as part of mono we have only one element so it called on next one time once the data is completed it will trigger on complete event so we are able to see all these events happen similarly i'll try with flux so for flux we should get uh, five on next events because we have five elements you see for flux it started with on subscribe similarly uh, the publisher first calls this on subscribe method after that subscriber calls the request with unbound so it is asking whatever the data you have just send it to me after that for uh, data 1 it created on next of 1 for 2 on next 2 similarly for element 3 on next 3 4 5 once all the data is done it sent on complete event if you go to postman we are not able to see any asyn uh, asynchronous uh, thing so it's same like the traditional rest web, ser web services to see that i'll add some delay with this uh, data delay sequence i'll add the duration of sec i'll add the seconds I 
I am adding 2 seconds for each or next event I am putting 2 seconds delay so now I will start my application again so it should work in your asynchronous way it should not block the thread so now I am going to postman and hitting my endpoint and to support this we should change the data type also it should produce us we have we got some new media types media types dot p small here it is path media type is application json streams it's not uh, application json value it should be streams stream json value so that it will stream the data so if i hit the endpoint after it should not emit the data immediately so it should take some delay See, we can see the data. Uh, with delay sequence we are not able to see the delay so it's a delay elements it add for each element it adds the delay it's not delay sequence delay elements let's start the server now if i go to browser and the hit i'll hit the endpoint See, uh, it, it's not blocking after every two seconds it started emitting each one by one element uh, thank you friends in my if you like my uh, video please subscribe